you you can start already isn't it to uh, uh, well it's okay one minute if you want to, yeah. to wait a little bit more bonjour laurent goffard mm -hmm. Bonjour. <coughs> Bonjour. Okay, I can okay. start maybe. Mm. Yes. Okay, I will present the two speakers uh, of today. Um, I will start with Daniello. Uh, Daniello Lampo completed his PhD at the Institute of Photonic Science of Barcelona, focusing on complex quantum systems and quantum to classical transition. Currently, he works as junior postdoc at the Internet Interdisciplinary Institute of Barcelona and studies urban complexity and ecological networks. <clears throat> he is also interested in the philosophical and historical aspects of science, such as the political role of scientists and the relation, the relation between scientific research and society. Today, he will talk about the non-neutrality of science and algorithms by focusing on machine learning algorithms. For the second speaker, Floriana Gargiulo is PhD in a theoretical physics at Università di Studi di Torino, uh, and today, a researcher at SNRS at the GEMAS laboratory in Paris. Her profile has a strong interdisciplinary characterization. Starting from the tools of statistical mechanics and of complex systems, her research interests cover a large spectrum of applications. The late motive of her recent activity are the complex networks and the dynamical processes on and of these structures. She has recently published about the increase in online night activity during the spring 2020 COVID-19 lockdown, about the debates um, on vaccines in France, as well as about the rise and fall of reputation within the Bitcoin market. Today, she will talk about the gender inequality genesis. Uh, it's up to you. Okay, so <clears throat> I guess I can start. Yes, so uh, good morning everyone, uh, thank you for attending. Uh, my name is Aniel Lampo and uh, as Fabrizio just said, uh, I am a postdoc in the Internet Interdisciplinary Institute of Barcelona. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers to give me the possibility to be here, at least from a virtual point of view, and actually, I also would like to congratulate them to create uh, this workshop, which I get, which I think uh, constitute a very nice uh, experiment, uh, an original experiment, which permit to people coming from different areas to meet and learn. The area um, where I grew up uh, is uh, theoretical physics. I am a theoretical physicist. And well, as uh, Fabrizio just said, I did my PhD in uh, complex quantum systems and now investigating um, urban complexity and uh, ecological networks. The work I'm going to present today is slightly deviates from this trajectory. And basically, together with uh, these two guys, Michele Mancarelli and Angelo Piga, two physicists too, we focused on a problem, you foc we focused on a problem of sociology of science. I mean, the role of uh, machine learning in physics. Particularly, we try to contextualize uh, su such an issue in the uh, epistemological debate of the last century concerning the neutrality of science. And well, this work, so the work uh, I'm going to present has been published in this journal, a political science journal called Labs Quarterly, and can be found at this reference. So the starting point is uh, this issue. I mean, 
So we start by this issue. How does science evolve in time? I mean, according which direction the production of scientific knowledge evolves along the history. So what defines such direction? Just mere technical, logical criteria internal to the scientific domain, or it is also affected by historical, social, political and economical ones. So this issue is our starting point. And actually it was a really intense debate in the last century, which actually is not closed yet. Here I am quoting the main two points of view with the related representants, conventional and positive popper from one side on one side, Kuhn, Feyerabend, as yet on the other end. I have no time and, and maybe not the capability, because I'm a physics, uh, to explain the, the philosophy of these guys. But well, for our purposes, the main issue I would like to say, I mean, the main future of, uh, of these two groups of people, which deserve to underline for our discussion, is that, well, people on the left think that uh, uh, the evolution of science mm, defines a linear cumulative process. So it is not affected from the society around. In this sense, we say that science, the evolution of science is a neutral process. Contrarywise, people on the right think that uh, science, so to understand how science evolves over the history, uh, we need to uh, take into account the society around with uh, all the historical, political and economical dynamics. In this sense, we say that um, science define is, uh, is non-neutral. So what is our claim? Our claim is that, of course, science is non-neutral. It is uh, uh, strongly constrained to the society around and um, Maybe for people coming from STS, this could be a obvious, obvious thesis, but um, for me, for people like me coming from uh, physics, uh, who grow up in a physics research institute, this is not trivial at all, because the majority of scientists, physics, mathematicians, think that are fully, are uh, basically scientists, and think that science is, a, is something uh, about all the parts, uh, which is not affected, to totally isolated by the society. So this is, was actually one of the main motivations of our work, so to, mm, to politicize scientists, to uh, uh, discuss this thesis of the neutrality of science in a, uh, in the, in a scientist environment. So to perform this task, we focused on, a, mm, on this case of study the role of machine learning in physics. So actually, during the last year, we, we, we point out a boom of machine learning techniques in the physics research. So in the following, I will explain better the, what I mean by machine learning. But now, uh, just to focus the, pro, uh, the problem, I would like to say is that, well, in traditional informatics, uh, machines are able to perform just one task, the task for which they have been coded to. With machine learning, uh, we have a um, change of paradigm, we could say, according which machine learning le machine learn from big data and, are, and gets able to uh, perform a task without being directly prepared to do it. So, as already told you, during the last years, we uh, found a, we have a boom of uh, these techniques in general, we have a boom in all the economy, as I will show you in a while, but and also in physics. Uh, our hypothesis, which is the hypothesis I would like to discuss with you later, is that the boom of these techniques in the in the in the physics research cannot be understood just as uh, just by considering uh, so as a mere technical logical criteria but needs to take into account also the society around, in particular the platform capitalism era, 
which is uh, characterize the economy in uh, this historical uh, period. So this is our hypothesis, which I will I, I try I will try to uh, to support. So I would like to say something about the method we follow. So in the first part of my speech, uh, I will basically discuss the boom of machine learning techniques in physics. And in this case, for uh, in this context, I will we basically follow the a data analysis approach. In particular, we um, analyze data co concerning the publication in physics of the last years. Uh, then, when I will try to uh, link this uh, phenomenon, the boom of machine learning in physics, to the society around, we adopted a practical approach. I mean, we uh, employ our direct experience in the field. And actually, here I would like to say something about uh, our biographies. Mm, this work was the two years ago, some approximately two years ago, when I was a PhD together with Angelo Piga in the um, Institute of Photonic Science, uh, which is a, um, an institute of uh, uh, joining uh, basically quantum physics scientists. And well, Michele worked in a similar context. And well, here in this context, we, uh, we point out the high level of precariousness precariousness in which uh, scientists work, characterized by very low salaries and uh, yeah, still a high level of precariousness. And contrarywise, outside of the academia, in this year we found a mm, very active economy, especially that related to big data, artificial intelligence, and also machine learning. So, this strong disequality between a poor academia, poor university, poor research, and a very rich big data, uh, this kind of economy, push scientists to, uh, to go out from academia to, to, to look for a better future. And of course, to perform this transition, they need to, uh, they need to acquire skills. And so these skills are also employed in the research and this, I think, motivates, in part, uh, the boom of machine learning techniques in uh, physics. This is our hypothesis I would like to uh, share with you. So, the, the, the talk is basically divided in three parts. So, in the first part, I will basically explain some definition of machine learning, which I guess is used to better approach the discussion. Then I will uh, uh, talk about the application in particular one. Then I will explain the, the boom of these techniques in physics. I will present the bibliometric analysis, which, uh, which permit to detect the, the, the boom of these techniques in physics. And finally, I will describe the social context, both within the academia and outside. So, Concerning uh, the situation outside academia, we'll talk about the situation concerning platform and big data economy. And then concerning the situation within the academia, we'll talk about the precariousness in research. So this is the, the, the path I will follow. So let's start with machine learning. So uh, the expression, uh, this expression, machine learning, was coined in the in the in the 50s by this guy Arthur to define the ability of a machine to automatically learn by itself from data without being explicitly programmed to do so this expression is usually overlapped uh, with artificial intelligence there are some nuances in the paper uh, we explain these nuances but um, for the general discussion i'm presenting now I think uh, there are no problems. So the, the, the first work of machine learning appeared still in the, in the 50s, for instance, with the attempt to model neuron, in particular by means the perceptron input-output binary model. Then the second step was to organize these uh, neurons in uh, sets, giving rise to neural networks. In the, since the 2000s years, 
we have a, an important uh, a, a challenging uh, a challenging result in this uh, research field with uh, deep learning relying on the so-called deep neural networks which consist of uh, neural network organized in a sequence of layers why this uh, mm, why we have this uh, deep neural network well basically for two reasons because uh, well first of all because there was a need to improve calcul calculation power and also because of the large amount of data provided by the internet in that period so here on the right i am presenting a a sorry, one problem so here on the right uh, uh, I am presenting so a, a scheme of a neural network where the green point represents a neuron and uh, mm, the, the so organizing layers and the green block defines the deep neural network. So, and this is what uh, this, this kind of organization is, uh, is used, is often used today and um, is what is related to what we uh, call deep deep learning. So, one of the most important application of uh, these techniques is image recognition. This is just one of the possible application, but a very important uh, a very important one. So, for instance, it's considered uh, the problem of distinguish the different objects in the city. Okay, here I'm providing you an example. Uh, where, for instance, we show to the machine um, the, the photo of a city and we ask to, to do prediction about the, um, which kind of object the machine see. For instance, if you see a building, a person, a bicycle. So how do we, so how do we proceed in this situation? Well, in traditional informatics, uh, the, the machine is able to perform this task only in the situation in which uh, it has uh, the photo we show it stored in its memory. So uh, if the machine has in its own memory the photo of a bicycle and then uh, you show it so it can recognize. So the machine then can go beyond this situation and it can recognize a photo even though it had never seen before. So how do we proceed? So there are basics, there are basically two phases. The, um, the first phase is uh, the so-called training. So we provide to the machine uh, a data set in which uh, we show, for instance, a photo like this, where we say, this is a bicycle, this is a person, a training set. So we are training the machine. Then we can show a photo which the machine never seen concerning a city and the machine gets able to do prediction. For instance, we can show this photo. Uh, uh, this, I guess it's Florence. So we suppose that the machine never seen Florence. And it is able to recognize in Florence what is a building, what is a bicycle, a human. So summarizing with the machine learning, we uh, get, we, uh, the machine gets able to do prediction to learn from a data and do prediction also uh, beyond the starting data set. So, so the, 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 pos the, the, the possibility, the ability to do prediction is the main future of machine learning. During the last year, we detect a boom of this kind of techniques in, um, in the physics research, as I told you in the introduction. Mm, to, to prove this trend, we look into the, we analyze data uh, concerning the archive platform. So what is archive? Archive is a, is a largely used platform, web platform, where scientists, uh, mostly physicists, uh, put their paper. It's an open access platform. And um, we found, we count that uh, in 2018, uh, the rate of publication uh, put on archive for months is about 10,000 new papers a month. So I think that analyze the data of archive, we have an idea, a clear idea of the, 
trend of physics research. So we look into the we look for the papers containing the word machine learning, neural networks, and deep learning in the title and abstract. And we found this trend. So on the vertical axis, we have the, the fraction of the paper over the whole one containing these two, three words in the title or abstract. And where we found this um, trend. So there is a strong rise since 2014. So since 2014, since this year, we have a strong rise of paper containing these three words uh, in the title of abstract, so concerning these topics. We also go in detail looking for the, so specifying the, this, uh, this uh, task, this research to the, to the particular field. For instance, we look into astrophysics paper, condensed matter paper, quantum physics paper, and I physical uh, and high energy physical sorry um, paper and we see a very similar trend so why is basically so of course there is a, a tech there is also a technical reason to to employ these uh, techniques but for instance in quantum machine uh, quantum physics machine learning is here, the use of machine learning is related to the quantum machine learning physics uh, field which is uh, the the attempt to develop machine learning algorithms from the quantum computer, while in the astrophysics and energy physics, uh, the use of machine learning is uh, basically related to the image recognition I showed you before. So, but well, as I my my thesis is this is not this technical reason is not the only one. In fact, and here starts the social parts. Uh, this rise, 2004, so this rise in 2014 corresponds to the ImageNet Large Scale Visual Recognition Challenge, which is a grant with uh, research in uh, uh, deep learning and machine learning one, which uh, stimulated um, companies like Google to put a lot of money uh, in this field of research. Daniela, so, hey, cinque minuti più o meno. Uh, yes, sorry. I'm okay. finishing, I'm finishing. Okay. So, so summarizing, we have this boom in uh, of machine learning techniques in physics. Of course, there are some uh, technical uh, motivation to use the techniques in uh, this research field, but um, we cannot understand this boom only by the technical criteria. So we look into the society. So as I already told you before, we have a very active platform ec uh, economies relying on which employ big data techniques uh, using this kind of techniques. For instance, Netflix uh, profit uh, coming from big data is uh, about 80%, Facebook nine, mm, 95%, and then we have also all the companies like banks, digital security finance, and so on. Uh, in fact, there is a, a report of this guy we uh, estimate the growth projection of the market size of uh, to about um, 58 billion dollars by 2021. While in 2017 it was only just 12. In fact, in the in this field, in this economical field, we have uh, uh, we have uh, that uh, according to this report, LinkedIn. 2017 uh, report that the most request, requested professions are data science and machine learning engineer. In fact, according to this EBM report, so the 40% uh, increase in data science post in the 2016 alone with giving an equal projection of growth by 2012. So summarizing, we have uh, so people uh, with uh, machine learning, big data skills are strongly requested in the platform economy, which in turn is very, very active. Conversely, in the academia, we have uh, a high level of precariousness, basically because of the crisis of the cuts of the crisis of uh, 2008. For instance, according to this report, in the US, the number of postdocs in science increased by 
according to this fraction between 2000 and 2012 without any parallel increase in permanent post and tenure track. The science and engineering indicators show that the percentage of PhD with chances of getting tenure track or, or uh, position is only about 20%. This is according to the report. So, uh, in view of this situation, we uh, we developed our hypothesis. So if the scarcity of stable position is like to force many researchers to leave academia against their vocation, the private sector high salaries certainly have a strong attraction. Physics develop skills to perform such transition. The boom of machine learning techniques in physics is also due to this phenomenon. So this is our hypothesis. Uh, and here I would like to open the discussion. Thank you. Fabrizio, I let you. Uh, I see. I've seen that there are some questions, but maybe maybe we can switch to to Florian and then uh, open up the discussion uh, after. What, what do you think? Maybe there is a, a, a an empirical question by Floriana. Is the trend the same in other disciplines for uh, the the use of machine learning? I assume. I don't know. Uh... I mean, the other discipline beyond physics. Um, actually, we did not analyze this data, but uh, um, it could be perhaps. Yeah, but, but I mean, uh, the answer is pr probably yes. But I mean, the, 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 the rate may vary from discipline to discipline according to the, the, the use of formal tools, probably. But, uh, mm. But uh, yes, uh, it's probably the case. I mean, the, the, the question is maybe, is that important for your argument? And how important is, it is for your argument? To have other yeah. disciplines, you mean? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that if we found the same uh, trend for our, uh, for our disciplines, um, I mean, our argument uh, get, uh, I mean, uh, get, does not get weaker because, um, so basically, the the main thesis we would like to to share is that um, the use of these uh, of the techniques cannot be fully understood just by without looking in, uh, in the society around in the economy of big data so so of course we focus on the physics because we are physicists and we work in uh, in that context but uh, uh, so if we found the same trend also in other uh, disciplines, so it's a, it's a proof too. So I think... Uh, I, I, can I, you, okay. yeah. um, I, maybe I, I, a, a small clarification before proceeding to uh, Floriana. So you started with the neutrality of science, the links science society, and then uh, your... Uh, so how ca can you maybe be more specific about the conclusion and the link between your conclusion and this neutrality of science? Is that that physicists are also able to have some uh, useful for society uh, knowledge? Or I mean, what no, uh, outside well, labs? I mean, what, what is the, exactly the link? I don't see no. the link between the introduction and the conclusion. Yes, so, uh, well, what I would like to say is that, well, um, is, so, the, this case of study I presented, the, 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 the role of machine learning in physics, so, uh, is a proof of the fact that the evolution of science depends on the society around. In this sense, uh, it provide it constitute a proof of the non-neutrality of science. I mean, of the fact that the evolution of science, the historical evolution of science depends on the society around and cannot be isolated. This is the link. I don't know if I... I think I think that, in, for example, in STS, uh, we, we, we can distinguish several uh, kinds in which uh, there is a, several dimensions in which uh, the co-production between science and society can be done. What you, what you address is one of, uh, for example, at least uh, three levels, uh, which I can think of, you see. Like one is the economic uh, aspect, like, uh, and that's what you focused the most, at least in your presentation, uh, uh, talking about the fact that uh, the market of IBM, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera full Facebook, Google, et cetera, drive <clears throat> the, 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 um, 
the works of physicists and uh, 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 let's say uh, taking them out of academia and there is also a, a, a nice um, quotation that i don't that i forget in in, in your in your uh, uh, in your text which is uh, um, basically uh, i don't remember anymore i think it was uh, some the ibm reporter who said uh, ah, the the academia public um, uh, school should form the the next generation of uh, data scientists for uh, uh, the market then there is uh, another another uh, level which for example i was interested in the most in in this seminar uh, uh, meaning how uh, the, the 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 the, the two come, come on there uh, how the the interests uh, economic and political interests uh, influence society even into the models themselves. I think that Pablo was asking something about that, and actually it was one of my questions for the discussions. Uh, 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 and you are not obliged to, to 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 answer because we understand that you are like at the beginnings of 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 your of this kind of research. So um, if you don't have the the, the answer, it's it's not important. But at least. Uh, we, 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 I want to, I want to, to go in the same direction as, as Pablo by asking you, did you reflect, do you have uh, some kind of uh, examples or do you have some kind of uh, field works that you want to do next uh, in order to explore how the uh, economic, political, cultural, etc., etc., let's say normative tenets uh, of society inscribed in the very structure, intrinsic structure of the models. Do you understand? Because because then there I is... think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Well, uh, yeah. Actually, this was the so if I understand the uh, the question properly, this was uh, one of the main motivation of our work. So to provide a, an example in this direction. Well, so uh, concerning your question. I, so the first example uh, I come to came to my mind is there is an important book in Italy called Lape e l'architetto, which in English translates uh, into the, the bee and the architect. But well, actually, this is a, although it's a really interesting book, there is not translation to foreign languages. So where they um, provide the link, so where they explain the link between the 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 quantum mechanics theory and the uh, economical uh, goals of the economy of the Deutsche Borgesi in, uh, in that period. And explain that this uh, uh, strongly affect the direction of the research in quantum physics and also the, the, the structure of the model uh, developed because uh, because it was affected the quantity, the quantity you measure, and so also the, um, the the way in which you uh, construct the model. If I understand your question, I think this could be a, a, the next example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also, I mean, another example to support our thesis. Yes, yes. I, th I think this is the most interesting kind of examples that uh, uh, created, uh, that, 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 that show that STS was very strong, because it's quite... Uh, easy to say that maybe society or economics uh, can attract uh, people from academia, but this is not uh, 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 the final, this is not a, 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 a sufficient proof that uh, 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 there is a co-production between science and society. You, you see what I mean? We, the, the, uh, uh, unless you, you find some kind of in, in, in inscription of normative tenets into the models themselves, you you the the the, the strong the the i'd say the thesis of co-production uh, 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 is not in my eyes fully 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 demonstrated but you you gave you gave an example yeah pablo yeah, I well, well, actually to... actually okay, maybe we should move to florian yeah. and, and and also i mean maybe for the general discussion uh, we should also try to uh, link that to the politics of complexity which is uh, the, the scope of our seminar yeah. or some yeah. Yeah. okay so maybe we should uh, switch to floriana and okay. then okay Aniello, you, you you keep your answer for later <laughs> please thank you okay so can i share the screen now? yeah uh, Aniello, you should uh, give your uh, organizer, uh, you should give up your. Uh, and how can I do it? Uh, 
because I to give it to Floriana. You can you should be able by clicking on Floriana now because I click on Floriana and then you should on the three dots and donate the role d'animateur in French, but give the I don't know what what's I mean probably it's in English for you, but. I, you see it's the third item on the list the third item yes but mm. okay, okay i'm trying to to sure. do it myself is it working for Loriana? i think it's working okay great so i did it okay sorry uh, Daniel, uh, final, finally i i could do that myself okay so I just need to uh allow the screen sharing Okay, I don't know if it would work. Let's try. Um, okay. Seems, you... Yep, great. It's working. Okay. You still see this on the large. That's okay. We see it perfectly. The full okay. screen, so it's perfect. Thanks. Okay. Okay. So, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for inviting me for this uh, very interesting seminar. I'm attending uh, all, uh, the, uh, all the all uh, the all the all the week, uh, even if not always in presence. I always look at the registration, and uh, I'm very happy to be here. So, uh, in this seminar, I, I will uh, present you a contribution. Uh, from complex systems to the understanding of uh, gender inequality. So, first of all, I start uh, reconnecting uh, with uh, the presentation by Agnello uh, and to the concept of uh, non neutrality algorithms. Uh, algorithm, like uh, more in general, the social mechanism that regulates uh, human interactions are not uh, neutral. And uh, this uh, uh, non neutrality uh, contributes to create and amplify the pre existing inequalities. Uh, algorithms are not neutral for several reasons. First of all, uh, uh, as Aniello uh, told before, uh, they are not neutral because of the data that we use to train the, these uh, algorithms that are already extracted on the base of uh, an unequal society. Secondly, and uh, more importantly, uh, algorithms are not uh, neutral uh, by design uh, because uh, they um, contain the bias point of view of the coders. Indeed, the uh, algorithm need a sort of uh, simplification heuristic to deal with the large quantity of data. And uh, these, uh, um, these simplification heuristics uh, are uh, based uh, on the identification of, uh, of an individual with uh, the perceived characteristics uh, of uh, his uh, social group. So this is uh, probably the main uh, mechanism for non-neutrality. But third, there is another uh, source of, of uh, bias that is a different use that different social groups do of the same algorithm. So uh, it can exist some characteristic of uh, social groups uh, that uh, are biological or more probably um, socialized since uh, the childhood that uh, can bring uh, different uh, uh, social groups to use differently the algorithm. And uh, this uh, third uh, uh, bias will be the focus of our study. So, uh, gender inequality. Gender inequality is probably the most striking uh, and evident inequality in our society. It's a presence, uh, is present since ever, everywhere, and in every context of the society. So uh, the question, the big question is why we still have uh, this uh, striking inequality in uh, 2021. And uh, clearly, uh, several disciplines, uh, several types of study uh, try, to answer the, um, try to answer this big question. Here, I just put some uh, example of uh, different uh, famous theory for the um, origin of uh, gender inequality that come from a different discipline and from uh, different political ideologies. Uh, what we can see observe is that all these, uh, um, all these different theories, even if uh, so different among them, 
uh, they, are, they have a common point. They all uh, assume that uh, the algorithm, the social mechanism for building uh, um, status are biased by design. For example, uh, uh, sexual strategy theories uh, um, directly admit that men and women follow different heuristics uh, in uh, the competition for status. Uh, the um, theories related to cultural materialism, to materialist feminism, uh, say that uh, uh, the algorithm for status construction is uh, uh, co directly connected to the access to material resources, and therefore it is uh, by the world man that has immediate access uh, to um, resources. Expectation of state theory that uh, has been developed in um, social psychology uh, uh, are based on the assumption uh, of the existence of a strong bias connected to stereotyped views uh, of uh, the relation to power according to gender. So the uh, adage that women are less uh, gifted for leadership. Uh, gender role finally uh, argue about the association of uh, a role and its associated status to the pre-existing configuration. And uh, so it creates a uh, um, continuous persistent overall division. So uh, what we can say is uh, that most of this literature is based on the discrimination, namely uh, of, uh, on a simplification heuristics that uh, always associate in the evaluation uh, the characteristic of uh, an individual with the stereotyped, uh, stereotyped uh, characteristics associated to uh, her gender. Our research question is, uh, would we have gender inequality also in uh, an idealistic world where discrimination uh, does not exist? And in particular, can we identify some cognitive habits that are socialized very early in the childhood that can be responsible for the emergence of uh, gender inequality, also in a case where uh, discrimination is not present? So, uh, since uh, it is uh, not possible to find a uh, society without discrimination, and so to study this, uh, this, uh, this question in, um, with uh, a data-driven approach, uh, we uh, do this using uh, mod modeling, so, so the social simulation approach. Uh, our work uh, is uh, based on a strong collaboration between uh, social psychology and the complex systems. The social uh, psychology provided us the instruments uh, to uh, identify, the, to do a cognitive hypothesis on uh, which are the gender characteristics characteristics that could be connected to the, um, to the use of uh, this uh, status formation algorithm. Uh, from complex systems, uh, we use uh, uh, the, the modeling tools to uh, build a model for status construction that uh, is, uh, as much as possible, unbiased by design. So we try to build an algorithm where discrimination is uh, not, uh, um, is not uh, included. And uh, we ask, uh, with this uh, configuration, do we observe the emergence of uh, inequality? Let's start from the cognitive hypothesis from, uh, um, from uh, social psychology. So um, the cognitive hypothesis is con uh, connected to uh, two different uh, aspects. The first one is, uh, the, is connected to the relationship with the status hierarchies. And uh, uh, working in the context of the social uh, or dominant orientation theory and uh, the large set of experimental uh, evidence of this theory, uh, we come with a first assumption that is that men care uh, about uh, other status more, more than women do. And uh, it is uh, something that is uh, also connected with the stereotype of uh, the um, of stereotype to stereotypes in a certain sense because um, it is well known that, uh, um, that that competition for status is something that is uh, uh, somehow uh, um, desired for uh, boys more than for uh, girls. So uh, this is uh, what concerns the relationship with uh, hierarchies. The second aspect is concern the information processing uh, um, properties. Um, 
it has been observed that uh, we, men and women have a different approach when uh, uh, processing information. In particular, uh, when uh, they receive a, a message, it has been observed that uh, women have a large, uh, larger tendency to elaborate the content of the message in order to accept its content or not, while uh, men uh, have the tendency to use uh, external cues to decide the validity, validity of the message. Uh, so, uh, above all, uh, the, um, the person who conveyed the message will be uh, a stronger cue for men than for me, women to decide the, the, um, the acceptability of a message. So, uh, putting together these uh, two assumptions, we come with this uh, uh, cognitive hypothesis uh, that men use the status of the person who conveyed the message as a cue to decide the part of accept or not the message, more than women do. So, this uh, assumption uh, enters in the model through the introduction of uh, a, status, a different status open-mindedness parameter uh, that uh, regulates uh, how uh, an agent is uh, influenced by the uh, status of the other in the moment when he decides to accept or not a message. So, let's go now to the model for status construction. And the, uh, the status construction is uh, based on uh, the Leviathan model that uh, has been introduced uh, in uh, 2013 by the Fuan uh, and other. Uh, this is a model uh, that uh, aims uh, that show the emergence of uh, reputation hierarchies from a society of uh, initially equal uh, agents. Uh, all of the agents in the uh, system that we consider uh, have self-esteem and uh, an esteem uh, for all the other agents in the system, an, an opinion on all the other agents in the system. So uh, we can represent all the, the interactions, the, the, all the system uh, properties uh, with this uh, um, uh, uh, matrix, uh, with heat map of this matrix, that, uh, where each, each cell contains the opinion of each agent toward all the others. Clearly, the uh, diagonal of this uh, matrix is uh, the self-opinion, and uh, um, each column column represents the um, the, the, the the opinion uh, that an agent receive receives from all the other agents. So the sum of the value on the column column excluding the, the self-esteem is what we call uh, the reputation or the status of an individual. The model uh, is uh, based uh, on uh, the basic concept of uh, social influence, implying that um, when uh, uh, two agents discuss, their opinion tend to become uh, closer. Uh, what is added in uh, the Leviathan model is the fact that uh, if uh, once E and J interact, if J esteems I more than herself, so as a good esteem of uh, J, uh, the shift toward his opinion will be larger. So, uh, in the in the model for set construction that we consider, uh, first of all, we extract two, we select two agents I and J, and uh, agent I uh, speaks about herself about J, so the other, and about a certain number of uh, other individuals, so express opinion on this. J receives the opinion of I and uh, is influenced by I, so uh, moves her, opi her opinion toward the I. Now, uh, how, how much it moves toward I depends uh, on uh, um, on uh, the, the esteem she has of I. If uh, uh, he estimates, uh, he has a, if uh, she has a good esteem of I, he will move closer than in the case when he uh, esteems less uh, I. And here uh, it enters in the game the, open, the status open-mindedness parameter. Uh, this uh, uh, parameter um, 
distinguish the, uh, how distinguish the two situation between uh, uh, the case uh, where uh, j estimates uh, strongly i and when he estimates less strongly i. Uh, when the status of a mindness is um, uh, small, so it is very important the status of the other person that of the the person who is speaking. The difference between the two cases will be very large. So when E estimates J, uh, J estimate E uh, more than herself, it will move strongly closer. On the other side, it will almost not move. When the status of a mindness is larger, the two situations will be almost equal. So it doesn't import, it is less important the esteem that J has of I in the amplitude of the shift. So, uh, yeah. Okay, this is uh, the mathematical formulation of uh, the model, and uh, the only things to notice is that this uh, parameter enters in the influence function as a parameter that we call sigma. So in the future, when you see sigma, we intend this uh, uh, open-mindedness parameter. In uh, the original paper of 2013, uh, Defuan et al. tested the, the case where all the agents have the same status of n minus. And uh, uh, in this case, uh, they showed that the, 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 that, uh, the, the model naturally produce uh, uh, the emergence of uh, status hierarchies. So uh, some individuals, that have a much higher reputation respect to the other. What we did in our study was to divide the population into two groups and using the cognitive hypothesis from social psychology, we associated a small status of open-mindedness to the to men and large status of open-mindedness to women um, so in the since now from now on i will use a very stereotyped uh, coloring of um, of agents uh, in order to be clear uh, so um, what to, the, our question is now uh, the model we know to produce inequality but uh, is uh, um, how this uh, inequality is distributed the, among the two groups uh, that we will have now on. Uh, we, we observe uh, the emergence of inequality among the two groups. Notice that uh, the lecta mechanism is a mechanism that is not discriminatory because uh, when evaluating uh, the other, the information on which is uh, the social group the other belongs to is not considered by the person who is taking the decision on accepting or not the message and how to move toward the other. So um, in, some, in, a, in this sense, uh, the uh, Leviathan model is uh, not discrimin discriminatory by design. So with this uh, algorithm, do we have, and just this difference, uh, um, this cognitive uh, difference, can we observe inequality? And the answer is uh, yes, we can observe inequality. Uh, first of all, we see that in all uh, the possible configuration of uh, the parameter space, we always have that uh, uh, the average group reputation for men is higher than uh, the average group reputation for women. And uh, uh, repeating, for example, comparing, for example, uh, the case where the two social groups are present with the case where just one of the two social groups is present, we see that uh, on average, for example, uh, so the black baseline, we see that women uh, lose reputation in the interaction with men uh, respect to the case where they are uh, a group of only women. The same can be observed uh, for the self-esteem. And this is something uh, that is uh, that has been uh, extensively observed in uh, social psychology. So uh, last, uh, we try to see if uh, the inequality that we observe has uh, uh, the characteristic, one of the typical characteristic of uh, gender inequality, that is uh, uh, the glass ceiling inequality. Glass ceiling inequality has been defined uh, in um, through a series of uh, characteristics in uh, a paper of 2001 by Cotter. 
So the first uh, uh, characteristic of a glass ceiling inequality is that this is a, a difference that is not explained by other uh, characteristics. And uh, uh, this is uh, the, our case because uh, in the status construction mechanism, we never have uh, other uh, characteristics that uh, enters in the evaluation. And we see that uh, uh, in general, uh, men occupy the, uh, the best rankings independently from the, from the uh, parameters cho choice. Secondly, glass ceiling uh, uh, a gender difference that is uh, greater at the highest level of ranking, and here uh, and is low and lower at lower level levels. As we can see, the best ranking position on the left are always uh, occupied by men, and the difference decreases as we move toward the lower rankings. Third, uh, glass ceiling inequality is uh, not only a static uh, inequality, but it's also dynamic inequality in the sense that it also concerns the probability of uh, uh, the possibility of uh, improving uh, the position. And uh, also in this case, we observe that uh, for men, this probability to, to improve uh, above all the highest ranking is uh, still uh, higher than for women. So uh, what uh, we have done is uh, to create uh, a model that has uh, not uh, gender, that doesn't imply gender roles, uh, that uh, doesn't include an initial difference between men and women because the, they are all initialized with the same status value, um, that doesn't inc include uh, discrimination or prejudice, uh, doesn't include a lot of things like family obligation or stereotypes, uh, violence, division of labor, uh, patriarchal uh, religions, uh, accumulative economy, etc. We don't have all these things that we live in, we have in our society. We just have very basic rules. And yet this, uh, um, this model that is used, um, that is the same for men and women, still this model produces uh, um, an average reputation that is higher for uh, for men, uh, an average uh, self-esteem that is higher for men, uh, a gender inequality that has uh, the characteristics uh, of uh, glass glass ceiling. So, um, uh, as uh, in a shelling model, uh, we observe the emergence of segregation, even if it is uh, not the desired outcome uh, for the individuals. In our model, uh, uh, gender inequality emerged as a consequence of uh, individual uh, early socialized uh, behaviors that have nothing to do with uh, discrimination. Uh, our approach, uh, uh, the modeling approach that allow to exclude the discriminatory behavior, show uh, that not only gender inequalities depend from explicit uh, voluntary discrimination uh, behaviors that clearly exist in our society, but also from a very early socialized uh, attitudes relative to status perception that are uh, that uh, men and women unconsciously acquire uh, uh, since uh, ch childhood and unconsciously transmit to their children um, so uh, this uh, work uh, um, say that uh, fighting discrimination, fighting uh, uh, gender inequality cannot be done just fighting uh, discrimination like the initiative uh, for women, uh, the day for women in science, uh, things like this, but uh, it also uh, requires a, a deep working on uh, children education to, uh, to gender and uh, uh, to um, um, to uh, to a, to a deep um, to this uh, socialized very early socialized um, actors. So I uh, would like to thank my collaborators uh, Silvia Way from uh, Complex System and Felicia Prato from uh, uh, Social Psychology, and uh, thank you all uh, for the attention. Thanks a lot, uh, Floriana, for your presentation. Maybe I'll leave to Fabrizio the first uh, reaction since he's the main. Uh, 
person yeah. here. So what? Fabrizio, yeah. Right. Um, and yeah, for so everyone, just if you want to ask questions on the chat, I'll, I'll take care of the chat, okay? While Fabrizio, you, you discuss, maybe. Uh, basically, um, I, my, my, first que my first question, uh, it's difficult to, to ask because um, uh, it includes uh, several aspects. First of all, uh, I would interpret your text as a text using a toy model in order to explore, test and reinforce social theories about patriarchy. Uh, so first of all, uh, it's, it's, I, I don't have uh, any comment about the, 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 that, the use of, of toy models, because I think like uh, some philosophers, uh, I will mention Ilikowski and Audino Nat, uh, that um, uh, while the common objection is that toy model is too abstract to be explanatory, uh, I think that they are they are right when they say that it is instead a device for thinking about theoretical possibilities, uh, a, 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 and that uh, 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 such tools have to be um, explored and used uh, within a family of related models, uh, not as isolated representations. So, first of all, do you agree with this with this first uh, interpretation? Second question is uh, how do you articulate this complexity view of the social as a non-directed decentralized and self-organized system uh, with the social theories you mobilize because uh, in my opinion what, what you do is like uh, um, using uh, or uh, starting from the from this idea uh, common to complexity sciences uh, which uh, basically uh, shows that uh, very complex behaviors uh, are the effect of uh, simple uh, rules. Uh, so how, how does this uh, uh, interact or interface with the, with the, so with the sociological th or social psychological theories that you uh, mobilize? And, and the third question co connected to this is, uh, I don't you think, it's, it, it's a real question, I, it's, it's not a rhetorical question, Floriana, it, do, don't you think that there is a, a, a risk, because for me there is a sort of contradiction, uh, in, in, in one of the first slides that you um, showed, um, basically you said that uh, uh, these inequalities, gender inequalities are observable uh, basically everywhere and, 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 uh, and at any time. But how, so, so saying that, by saying that, don't you think that uh, the authors you mobilize or, or you yourselves, uh, authors of the article, this article, don't you think that you basically naturalize something? I, I, I'll formulate it in, in a different way. In order to uh, uh, explain the system with the simple rules giving rise uh, by decentralized behavior to complex behaviors like uh, uh, gender inequalities, uh, uh, don't you think that in order to, to be, be into this frame, to make sense of this frame, you need uh, uh, to start from, from a naturalized uh, view of uh, uh, gender inequalities? And then my question is, uh, what then uh, uh, do we do uh, uh, with uh, all the, um, uh, not very many, uh, I, 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 I confess, but there, there still is, are, sorry, there still are uh, a few societies in which uh, women can uh, have uh, uh, prestigious uh, uh, charge. Like, for example, I'm thinking of Mosuo. Uh, there is a nice reportage on Arte about the Mosuo, who, uh, who, are, who is a, uh, an ethnic uh, an, an, a group uh, in, in, in China. Uh, where women and, and men uh, are at least on the same level, and for some some things, uh, women are, are are even more uh, prestigious than men. So what 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 do you do with, with all this? I don't know if it's uh, it's clear what I want to ask. Okay, so uh, as usual, uh, I have problem to to do the concaten to to merge together all the questions. So I start from the point of the toy models. Um, yeah, uh, clearly, uh, when um, the idea of uh, this toy model, uh, and in particular in this case, uh, is uh, just uh, to explore a separate aspect, but uh, it is a more, much more complex uh, question. So, uh, in this case, uh, the toy model is used to isolate uh, one aspect, and uh, 
exactly what will screw the, the, the decisions of the other because the other exist and probably are even stronger as a driver of a social inequality so the the fact that the, 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 the status is uh, built on um, is built um, the status building mechanism are biased it's clearly true they are built by there is discrimination what we wanted to do is uh, to say going uh, assuming that discrimination exists do we have other mechanisms that are less evident uh, that uh, enter in the game even when discrimination does not exist so um, the idea is uh, uh, to take from a social psychology and um, to use uh, this uh, concept uh, of uh, social dominance orientation above all that try to explain the relationship of gender to uh, power, to status, and uh, all. Uh, so the, contrib the main contribution of social psychologists, uh, of social psychology, was to uh, create this uh, set of uh, initial uh, of of different 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 uh, different behavior for men and women. Uh, that is observed. Then how uh, this uh, behavior are learned is uh, is is not uh, what we want uh, to do it is uh, another world for example um, there are a lot of uh, modern feminist theory theories that uh, speak of epigenetic tra uh, transmission of uh, gendered attitudes i just speak of uh, very early socialized uh, behaviors but how this uh, um, how this uh, attitudes are socialized uh, is a uh, is one of the big question so uh, the idea of starting for, from social psych psychology was to start from real differences observed uh, in, uh, in ex with experience uh, social dominance orientation uh, has been uh, tested uh, uh, at the level of uh, very transversally with different uh, at different ages uh, on different countries uh, so it's a very solid uh, theory. It's, it's just not stereotyped because uh, we can uh, we can say that uh, uh, boys have a higher tendency to compete for status that uh, that uh, girl. But uh, uh, it is this is a, a common uh, this is a stereotype in a certain sense because it's something that we observe. Uh, we 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 say if uh, status uh, status dominance orientation. Uh, the social dominance orientation on the other side is based on uh, uh, enormous literature showing that uh, the, um, the consensus on um, on hierarchies is uh, different uh, on accepting hierarchies is different for men and women so uh, our idea was uh, to use uh, these tools uh, as uh, input uh, to, to define the, the basic characteristics uh, uh, not on uh, common language, uh, but trying to define this uh, the dif this difference based on uh, um, based on uh, solid empirical assumption in social psychology. But we don't want to explain this. We we uh, we, we cannot do this. Uh, I hope that some uh, if someone has idea of how to study this uh, the transmission of. Um, of this uh, gender behavior is uh, <laughs> would be very interested to to know something and uh, okay it's, 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 if i can say something uh, just to react uh, it, it is true that there are uh, studies also in anthropology there was a, a girl um, i forgot her name but she she published the book uh, homme grand femme petite uh, i don't know if you if you know mm -hmm. where, where where she she does a sort of a meta analysis uh, of different texts uh, and and show uh, with especially about archaeology from archaeology and shows that uh, uh, basically the fact that we observe in many and not in all but but in many uh, societies the fact that we men are uh, stronger and taller uh, was uh, a biological inscription of a cultural preference so the the, the, the difference between uh, uh, indeed uh, between uh, culture and nature is, is always uh, very uh, very difficult uh, uh, to make. But I was only thinking that about the fact that uh, among you, you, uh, Sylvie and, 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 and uh, Felicia, uh, uh, you, you probably had to have some kind of discussion because this about that, because because uh, your model, I mean, this kind of models uh, can can can. Uh, uh, 
I mean, I, I do know that when physicists or researchers use, use uh, toy models, they, they have some kind of, of uh, this distance between uh, from it, but still uh, these toy models could lead to reinforce uh, certain views which are not uh, um, about which we are not so so sure about you know like <laughs> what the region is so i was i wanted to to just uh, know how you 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 discussed uh, about it yeah and maybe just to to uh, before you answer floriana because I, I have another example you you also quoted Schelling's model okay mm -hmm. and uh, a colleague from computer science who had a, a column in pour la science okay uh, used Schelling model and presented it and the title from Pour la Science was uh, Segregation an inevitable issue or issue or something I mean uh, something you can't avoid I don't remember in in fatalité yeah, yeah. yeah okay because Schelling model shows that for many many utility functions and in many many uh, different uh, hypo for many different hypotheses you always end up with segregation Okay, and then we could say, okay, for many, many different hypotheses, we en always end up with bias, which I don't like too much this word of bias, but okay, we end up with inequalities. And then, okay, so it's a fatality, so let's, okay, that's it. So, I mean, toy models, I think, I mean, maybe, maybe more generally, don't you think that toy models are inherently moral, I mean, fragile with respect to this kind of, 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 of misinterpretation or because they, they tend to single out a single mechanism. I mean, that, that's as you presented them, okay? You, I, I want to test the, this mechanism and then you, you forget about all the, the rest. And then, I mean, is that, isn't that a, a fundamental weakness of these formal models? Yeah. So I agree with this. I mean, in fact, I say, uh, the other mechanisms are, are uh, much more tested. We, what we wanted to do was to test a different mechanism. So our different mechanism uh, doesn't say that the other are not, uh, I say that the other are, are more important still. Discrimination still remain probably the, the, the origin of uh, gender inequality, of gender or racial inequality. Uh, it is uh, probably the main driver, but uh, uh, at, um, the model does the model is a still is, is a toy model so uh, we cannot say that it really works in this way but also but suggest that uh, also other aspects can be important in this case yeah but then okay let me be provocative then to, to, to try to <laughs> you know me because we could okay two 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 reactions to that first is that I mean, if we want to be rigorous, all that you are testing is the effect of that mechanism within your hypothesis, okay? So, and we know that in, uh, at least in social sciences, we can never be sure that the effect of some cause is going to be the same, even in, in direction, okay? Pushing in the same direction, depending on the context, okay? A very simple example I take in my book is, what is the effect of climbing one more uh, floor uh, for the price of an apartment, okay? Does it, I mean, does the same apartment in the first or the second or the third floor, I mean, what's the effect of the floor, uh, of the level on the price? And the answer is, of course, it depends on other characteristics, okay? Is there an elevator or not, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, the only thing you are proving here is that if we assume da, 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 a very long list of, of, of assumptions, then the effect of what you're studying is that, okay? Okay, and then the problem is that we could, I mean, we could even claim, and I'm sure that it's not your case, of course, but we could claim that uh, formal models like this could be useful for like climate denial, you know, the, the negationist, because then you, you, sh you show, I mean, you, you, you throw some doubt about the uh, uh, mechanisms for inequality, okay? We could say, okay, the, the mechanisms are economic, political, and then you add with your model, okay, this is only epigenetics, okay? So I, I'm just uh, pushing a little bit too far what you are saying, but it's not completely uh, stupid, I, I think, I hope at least. So you just pop up with a model that uh, mathematically 
shows that, uh, very rigorously then, shows that maybe it's only epigenetics. And okay, this casts some doubt on the other uh, effects and, and some people could take it as you know, the, the studies, the famous studies about the uh, smoking cigarettes and lung cancer, or cancer lung, you remember, I'm of the lung, because the, there was this association, you remember. So, I mean, the, the, my, my point is, uh, I mean, I think that these simple models are, are dangerous from a politics point of view. I mean, this is the topic of the, of the seminar, okay? Yeah. So that's why I'm taking some time on that, because uh, the politics of complexity here could even be dangerous because these simple models can be used, okay, to throw some doubts on very well-known and well-established mechanisms. And this is more or less what you're saying. We know that there are some well-established mechanisms, but we propose another one, okay, and we just test that. But, so, so how would you object to that? <laughs> Sorry for the question. <laughs> no, I mean, we are, it's, it's, this is not personal, it's about the, I mean. Of course, of course, about science. Yeah, that's, uh, in fact, I think that models uh, should be uh, should be discussed uh, in, the, in a certain sense. You cannot use it as a it, it, the validity of a model is uh, inside the her, uh, inside itself. It's not uh, something that can be uh, as can be a, uh, we can assume as uh, the the truth. Uh, the model uh, gives uh, some uh, indication relative to its uh, context. And uh, uh, for example, uh, what uh, uh, I would, in, in my discussion of this, uh, when I discuss this, what I say is uh, uh, we have to change not only the, the discrimination aspect, but also the way we the, we learn children to um, to to socialize this. Uh, this, uh, the relationship to status. For example, in the last slide, I put a book, a page of a book that I always read to my son. Uh, that is um, for ch for children. Say, uh, trying to say, boys, you don't need to uh, compete for status every day. So it uh, th there is a, a lot of uh, so it's something that uh, mm, education can do. Education can do so. Uh, the what I for the, we need to discuss the model. We cannot give this uh, to politician to say, okay, use this uh, and uh, or give to um, to journalist because uh, it will become uh, if we if I give this paper to a journalist, it will become uh, it. Uh, we cannot avoid uh, inequality. Inequality, yeah. Okay. But if we discuss this, uh, we we say, okay, uh, when. Uh, when we con we consider we consider discrimination we consider inequality we cannot just look at uh, separate things we should put together a, a large spectrum of uh, um, of different concepts and among these uh, this model showed that also education is a central point as uh, we do as uh, the other points so it's very good to do the day uh, of women in science uh, but yeah, yeah. But, uh, you, you know what, because I, I will add <laughs> to the um, um, uh, evil question <laughs> of Pablo <laughs> another layer. No, I'm, I'm, to, I'm, I'm joking. I, 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 the thing is that um, I, I have a question. I, I, I um, realize that you uh, mostly cite social psychology. Was this a choice? Uh, for example, sociological and anthropological uh, sources were not available, were less pertinent, uh, first of all? Uh I think that basically we don't know so much. I think that I need more anthropological sources. Uh, uh, I think that we mostly had... Um, in fact, the collaboration started because uh, Felicia Plata contacted the Sylvie Uwe mm -hmm. because she was interested uh, in the status formation process, uh, mechanism of the Leviathan uh, to test uh, some theory uh, related to the social dominance orientation. Okay. And then I entered in the, I, I, we had a grant with CB, so we participated in the study. Uh, but, um, so this is uh, the <laughs> the origin of uh, this uh, this paper. Okay. Uh, I think, for example, what you did be you told before about society that work differently is something that should be studied because... Uh, yeah, because because the, my 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 evil question was uh, there, there is a, there is the risk of uh, of doing something uh, um, against your will. 
at least at least i'm not saying that the the model the toy model shouldn't be used as i said as an introduction but it's the way you frame it you you you, you accompany the discourse uh, of course you take a lot of uh, um, precautions etc but the, in my view the, the as a, as a social scientist the 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 the, the, the feeling that I had reading sometimes the, the, the article was that in some, somehow there was some kind of naturalization of gender inequalities. Of course, I do agree about the fact that education, for example, and education for more care, uh, uh, to, to inspire uh, guys to be also more for, for the care and not only the, the women for the care, okay? Uh, uh, it's, it's important. But then if education can change that, it means that it's not natural because if something it's natural, you cannot change even if uh, you do a law or if you change education. If it's natural, guys will always be competitive even if uh, the general culture has, has changed. You need, you see. So it, it, it's it's difficult to understand. Uh, 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 it, um, basically, the, the the I don't know how to say the 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 strength of your of your model and of your article could become a, a weakness for a social theory. That's, that's my, 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 my question. Yeah, no, it's true. But um, what we say is, uh, yeah, in a certain sense, we say that something that is uh, like this, uh, we cannot change. I think that uh, what, um, from, my point, from my point of view, what we want to say is that uh, we need a, a two-time work. The, the thing, working on discrimination is uh, necessary, clearly. But there is uh, uh, also, a, um, on a different uh, time scale, we should also include this. Uh, it, it's, we cannot change so easily this uh, kind of uh, very socialized, uh, early socialized uh, transmission. This is something that's more difficult to change. Okay, but, so okay, so what you what you mean is that like you you're trying to find some more uh, basic and general and simple uh, process or or mechanism instead of those that we that are much more easily identifiable and then maybe come later on on the human life. So you want to go back to 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 something simpler, something more general, which is not directly uh, uh, patriarchal, but the ten favor patriarchy. Do I interpret yeah. well? Okay. Yes, I think, I think that what we want would like to say is that uh, uh, it's good to work uh, on explicitly on discrimination, but still, uh, let's try to to have in mind that uh, also on a longer time scale we should work on uh, on changing this uh, transmission. I, I understand. Thank you, Floriana, for 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 for, the, for your patience. I, I think that there are many questions, Pablo, that we should address in the chat and also trying to include uh, Aniello in the discussion. Uh, do I read the, the questions in the order, uh, Pablo? Well, there is a question. Uh, I mean, the the main question is by Laurent Goffin on the. Uh -huh. I mean, it's more on the, the organization of science and uh, like a distinction between, I mean, artisan, craftsman-like or more industrial-like uh, organization of science. Uh, so this is a question addressed to Aniel, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. so maybe he, he wants to answer. Uh, the debate is almost only on archive, right? Uh, well, not only archive. Yeah, no, not really archive. I think it's. Uh, but okay. maybe Laurent can can Wait. use the microphone and ask the question. I mean, I, I don't see the the link exactly on the on the complexity and politics of complexity. But maybe if Laurent can try to to link his question to that, and then Aniello can answer. We have five minutes. Yes, so thank you for the for organizing these uh, seminars. Uh, my uh, questions, I wrote them because uh, as uh, they came in my mind following what I uh, listened uh, during the presentations. Uh, with respect to the archive, X archive, uh, I am a scientist uh, and I don't uh, read this, uh, this source of, uh, of information because I don't uh, I don't know if they are reliable, and I prefer to read uh, articles which are published uh, and in journals, in academic journals. 
because they have been filtered by experts in the domain. So I, I don't know if uh, the examination of uh, the content of archives uh, is uh, is an image or reflects the evolution of science. It, it may be just noise. And uh, the second uh, question, which uh, is, uh, is about, uh, it's something which is, maybe it's unrelated to the politics of complex sciences, although I, I view it as, uh, as completely central, is uh, I view the proliferation, the, mani the multiplication of, uh, of data, of uh, scientists, of, of uh, of people involved in uh, the generating uh, uh, scientific uh, uh, knowledge uh, uh, as, a, this is, as a multiplication. And, uh, but I see also that people are not motivated like uh, the past uh, scientists. Uh, that's my viewpoint. And uh, the, um, Floriana mentioned the, the importance of education. Uh, personally, I am the, my father was a craftsman, so and he, he never tried to do the best, to do the f most numerous things. Uh, uh, or he just wanted to be a good job and to do it. And uh, so, whereas I wonder whether we have uh, we have uh, the complexity of the system in which we live is not the consequence of uh, just disappearing a kind of uh, making science. So this is the the question uh, uh, that I was. Uh, that were traveling through my mind following the presentation of these two uh, two, uh, two presentations. If, if, if I may, if I may, so, so to, to make a transition toward, uh, towards uh, Agnello, basically you're asking, uh, uh, is machine learning uh, uh, maybe nothing more than uh, the uh, manifestation of a sort or the symptom of a sort of a, uh, decline uh, of science from uh, uh, artisanal, from craftsmanship, and to uh, industrialization. Basically, is that right? Exactly. Yes. Agnello. Well, uh, first of all, I would like to address the first question of Laurent. Well, first of all, thank you for uh, your question. Uh, the first one, well, concerning the goodness of uh, archive data rather than uh, peer review journal. Well, I would like to say that, well, uh, usually, well, actually often, uh, maybe always, uh, people, physicists at least, put the paper on archive, but also submit. So uh, I see almost all the papers which are on archive are also peer-reviewed and published on uh, on uh, on scientific journal. If you go to archive and open the web page of a given paper, you can see, well, the paper, but also the, the, the review to the journal. So in this sense, uh, I think that, yes, the archive provide uh, an, uh, an, uh, an idea of the direction of the scientific, uh, of the, of the, of the scientific direction. So I, I would like to say that there is no conflict between the, the archive and the scientific uh, journals. Because, because, the, because almost all the papers which are on archive are also on a, a peer review journal. So this is concerning the first question. Concerning the second one, well, it's a really interesting question. Uh, I need, I, I will need to reflect more. But yes, mm, so the main message of my of my of my talk is that well. Uh, the direction of science is uh, also defined mostly some some science by external economical actors which are uh, yes in this sense uh, generating a process uh, of industrialization in some sense if i understand correctly the expression you introduce so uh, still i need uh, i will need to reflect more but i think the insight you provide is fitting can, uh, Pablo, I don't know if you want to say something, but I want to just to react to Laurent and, and Agnello by uh, uh, mentioning uh, uh, on almost, uh, it became almost a classical in STS, um, uh, sociology of science, critical sociology of science from STS, uh, uh, Kelly Moore, uh, uh, Scott Frickel and uh, two other authors have published uh, some years ago an article about the asymmetr asymmetrical convergence between uh, <coughs> uh, science and uh, uh, in industry. 
basically the idea is that in the neoliberal era we uh, observe a tendency uh, uh, to uh, a tendency of uh, of uh, convergence between uh, academia and industry but what they say and it's very it's a very powerful uh, uh, um, uh, meta metaphor is that this convergence is asymmetrical basically yes industry and university converge but they converge <clears throat> on the on the on the side of industry basically that the culture of the industry and the objectives and the way of functioning of industry uh, uh, becomes more and more common within uh, academia that's that's probably uh, an idea to explain uh, to give a, a general framework to explain uh, this uh, this industrialization of uh, of science but maybe pablo you want to say something more to to, to end up the the seminar no i mean this is a long long standing issue and i mean history of science has shown that science has always been linked to industry yeah. it's not a new phenomenon at all so but that's I mean, I'm not a specialist of that. I'm not. Uh, that's not the topic. I think of the, the main topic of the no. the seminar. So I, I mean, uh, maybe we should invite people like Dominique Pest and specialists of that <laughs> question to discuss it in a more meaningful way, I guess. And for uh, archive, I just wanted to say that uh, it can also be seen as a, uh, an organ. I mean self-organization, let's say that uh, to use a term that is linked to complexity and to try to get the subject back to, 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 to our topic uh, of the scientific community. <clears throat> I mean, instead of uh, publishing through uh, Elsevier on, or, or publishers that make a lot of money, uh, by, by using our uh, work, I mean, we, we write the papers, we produce the science, we review them as a, com a scientific community. We could try, and there are many, many initiatives in that sense. Like I, I just uh, started one in, in network science called PCI. So it's a, it's a, a journal that uh, reviews, I mean, papers on uh, on archive that are sent to archive, and we review that uh, by a set of reviewers, which are just as part of their their, their work. And I mean, there is no publisher that gets money from that and papers are reviewed. And I, th I agree that peer review is important, but we can do that without uh, journals uh, in principle. So we are trying, we are experimenting ways of doing that without, uh, without journals. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so thanks Fabrizio for the links. <clears throat> so we, I think that we have uh, at the end of this seminar and we'll have physicists also next uh, next Monday, but uh, we are going to deal explicitly uh, with physics now. So the, the physics and complexity by uh, Jean uh, by Bar Barthélemy, who just published a few weeks ago in Nature one paper on on, <coughs> on Zipf's law, which was one of the regularities of uh, urban uh, science and he, he he'll explain his point of view of physicist on urban dynamics and uh, well uh, on a social science which is urban economics and uh, he will discuss with Jean-Marc Levy Leblanc on the physics and complexity is complexity really uh, compatible with physics or is physics a way of trying to get rid of complexities uh, so I think that, that that's going to be a very nice uh, discussion on, on, on these topics. And so I say we meet again on next Monday, the same same time at 11, OK? OK. So, Thank okay, you. Thanks. Thank you, Aniello thanks. and Floriana. Thanks, both of you, yes, for your seminars. And thanks for all the participants. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you next Monday.